Hey guys, welcome back. I'm here with the part two in my setting powder video series. There's really only two videos, so it's not really a series, but I did the first one with two really great dupes for Laura Mercier translucent setting powder that I had just come across pretty recently. This has been a favorite setting powder of mine for years and years, and I just came across a couple that I really, really love, one drugstore, one higher end, and if you wanna see more about that, I'll link that video. So this video is just general setting powders that I really like in general for my over 40 skin that is combination that still gets oily in the T-zone. So I like to start out with a really good set to my makeup. And these are not touch-up powders, these are setting powders. I have some loose and pressed and high-end and low-end that I like and go to. So if you wanna see those, just keep watching. So to start, I'm gonna tell you what I like in a setting powder and what I don't like. Whether it's loose or pressed, I want a setting powder that's gonna make my skin look nice and keep me somewhat shine free for several hours before I have to touch up when I'm on the go. I typically always set with the translucent powder. I don't like anything to change the color of my makeup and I find tinted powders do change the color of my makeup. And I tend to stay away from any setting powder that looks chalky or too matte or too dewy and that gives flashback because I've been caught in too many situations where I thought I looked great and I ended up in photographs unexpectedly and you guys know if you've been there it's horrible because you end up with all those white patches on your face and yeah I don't like that so I'll show you at the end the four that I really kind of eliminated from this because I never reach for them because of the flashback situation. So I'm gonna start with Loose and I'm gonna start with Drugstore and a cult classic, the Cody Airspun Powder. This is one that has been around forever and I think I used it in high school or college and I rebought it when I finally came back across it somewhat recently. The real drawback to this one is the smell. It's got a really overpowering kind of baby powder floral smell and it does go away once you put it on the skin, but that's just really kind of what turns me off. Apparently they have one that is a scent free version. I have yet to come across that version. So if you find it, I would snatch that one up. But this is kind of a beige tinted powder, very similar to the Laura Mercier as well. And it does kind of blur pores, I find. It just disappears nicely. It doesn't give a white cast in photography. Excuse my veiny hands. That's just how they are. But um, it's, it's invisible. It blurs my pores. It looks really beautiful on the skin. It never looks overly powdery and it doesn't give flashback. So it really meets all the criteria. My main issue with this is that it comes out in this cloud of dust, powder dust, I guess. Um, so it can be kind of messy and the scent could be really off-putting to some people. And sometimes I just I don't know, I don't wanna deal with that. But for a drugstore option, it's a great inexpensive powder to have if you can stand the smell. The second one I'm gonna recommend, I feel like a lot of people don't use because they are put off by the foundation or they've used in the past and kind of forgot about it. That That's my situation. Um, I picked this back up recently because I retried the Bare Minerals Foundation and that will be in a different video. But this is the Bare Minerals Mineral Veil. They have several versions of this now, but I just got the regular version. I forgot what a great setting powder this is. Um, if you have not tried this, you may wanna give it a go. I know they have a hydrating one and illuminating one. Um, I stuck with the regular just because I feel like it does a great job of blurring pores and it kind of gives a soft diffused look to the face almost, um, whether you use it with the Bare Minerals Foundation or your regular foundation. I've even used it with just a skin tint and it just somehow evens out the skin and gives it just this Photoshop effect somehow. I love the delivery system. This, you just turn to unlock the three holes and dispense the product into your lid. And it is very similar to the other powders I've mentioned so far in that it is a beige tinted powder so it doesn't whiten out your face too much and it just looks really nice and again no white cast no nothing like that it just looks beautiful i feel like your typical youtube cliche even mentioning the next powder but it's the rcma no color powder i hate how this dispenses i don't like the spice 
container that it comes in because really you have no lid to dispense it in. You have to find another something to put it in, um, which kind of bugs me. So I really don't reach for this as much as I probably should. You get a ton for your money and it is a no color powder. Despite it being white on the skin, I find that it really does not change the color of my makeup at all. It controls oil pretty well. It doesn't give flashback or anything like that. So, I mean, you know, it's a decent powder if you can get past this funky delivery system. Um, you know, what I do find though, is that when I first put it on the skin, I just rubbed it in right there. It can look a little bit powdery right away, but then it somehow sinks into the skin. So I was a little bit worried when I first tried it. It doesn't blur my pores or do anything, you know, fabulous for my skin, which I don't really need that from a setting powder because sometimes I use finishing powders over my makeup, my finished makeup look once I'm done. It's a nice basic powder. And, you know, I kind of went into it pretty skeptical thinking I wouldn't like it because I feel like a lot of YouTubers like it that have dry skin, but it actually is pretty good. I had to also mention the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder because I do use this to set under my eyes if I'm ever using a facial setting powder that I really don't like under my eyes. You know, a lot of people hear about this and they're like, why am I gonna buy another powder for under my eyes? If you open it up, it's kind of a scary white color and it looks like it's completely going to give you all kinds of flashback and make you look just like reverse panda eyes under your under your eyes. But it really, I don't even know why I'm putting these on the back of my hand because you can't see anything that they do on the back of my hand. This has been a staple for me for maybe 20 years. I always keep it on hand, always, 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 and it's never failed me. And I've heard some people say that they've gotten it and it was too glittery or shimmery under their eyes, but there's no shimmer in this. I don't know if she did a random batch that had shimmer, but there is no shimmer whatsoever, but it is so incredibly finely milled. It just disappears. It just is the perfect powder for setting your under eyes and brightening without making you look like a ghost under your eyes. And it never makes me look older. There's a lot of setting powders out there that I've tried that have made me look older. Nobody wants that if you're in your 30s or over, right? So this is just something I keep on hand and you can see the difference in size in the secret brightening powder and the translucent powder. So you can tell this is specifically made for your under eyes. It's just great in my opinion to keep on hand if you ever want a little bit of extra brightening. So that's it for the loose. And again, my two very favorites that I reach for the most are in that first video that I did that I have linked. I have four pressed powders here. The one that I reach for probably the most that I feel confident that I could travel with this and not need to bring a loose setting powder is the Maybelline Fit Me. And I have the shade Translucent 100. So I did mention the Maybelline Fit Me pressed powder in a favorites video a while back. And I had said that I really like the powder, but I don't like the packaging. I don't like that you have to have your powder here and reach underneath it for the mirror and the sponge. But that's if you're gonna use it as a touch up powder, which I love it for that too. So this is just a great all round powder if you need something to set and touch up. To set, I will set it with a sponge, a dry sponge, and I'll do it under my eyes and I'll do it on my face. I'm looking in the mirror because that's actually what I set my makeup with today. Um, but this is a great pressed powder to set under your eyes and to set all over your face. It's lightweight, it's not cakey, it's smooth yet creamy, and it mattifies without looking cakey or powdery. So that's pretty much everything I need and it, it's a great, great powder. Rimmel Stay Matte is my second pressed powder that I'm going to mention and I have that in the shade 001 Transparent is what they call their version of translucent. I do use this both again for a touch up powder and a pressed powder. And it's not quite as light as the Maybelline Fit Me. It's kind of a cream shade, but it disappears into the skin. Um, it doesn't alter the color of my makeup. It's again, matte, not flat. I find it's not powdery and I find it gives great oil control in my T-zone. Out of all of these, this is probably the one that gives me the most oil control the longest. However, I don't like it under my eyes. I feel like it looks a little bit drying underneath my eye area. So if you do have texture underneath your eyes, I would avoid putting this there and use something separate 
to put it under your eyes, like the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. But yeah, for a drugstore powder, I find this is this is really good. Again, this is another packaging issue. There's no mirror. If you're gonna take this for touch-ups, there's no mirror and there's no sponge. You can stick a sponge in here or you can just carry a little brush and use that to touch up with. So the next on my list is the NYX HD Finishing Powder. I think that's what it's called, Finishing Powder, yeah. Um, this is very white, so if you look at it compared to the Stay Matte and they're both translucent slash transparent, um, you know, they look really different. It looks like this one would really make your skin look scary, scary white, but very similarly to the RCMA, it just disappears into the skin. It does kind of blur pores. It really makes your skin look very pretty. It's very silky to the touch and it just, again, kind of disappears. I find that this does control shine pretty well. Again, I don't like this under my eyes. I don't like this under my eyes even more so than this. This makes me look like the Crypt Keeper. It is horrible under my eyes. So I would definitely use something else under your eyes if you're gonna be using this. The last pressed powder for me that I really like and reach for a lot is the Too Faced Primed and Poreless Setting Powder. And this uh, claims to be a skin smoothing setting powder and I find it does just that. It's invisible under my eyes. It smooths my skin. It's very silky. It sets, but it doesn't look like powder. It mattifies, yet it doesn't look cakey. And it touches up very well during the day. And you know, because it's pressed, it's travel friendly. So the packaging for this is very similar to the Maybelline Matte and Poreless in that you have your powder here on the top at least your mirrors here, unlike the Maybelline, and then your sponge is on the bottom. I don't know where that sponge is. Um, so yeah, so I really like this. It's very great to use for travel because I can use it all over my face, including under my eyes. It looks beautiful and I can carry it with me to touch up during the day. That's what I would say about these two as far as setting and touching up. They're portable, they're great. I typically don't bring a loose powder with me to touch up, but that's just me. So I have four here also that just didn't pass my criteria. I've had them and I don't really know why I still have them actually because I really, I never reach for them. The first is the It Bye Bye Pores and I have the NARS Translucent Crystal Light Reflecting Setting Powder. And I have both of the Tarte Smooth Operator powders, the Loose and the Pressed. I find all of these to be decent powders, but they absolutely fail in the flashback portion of my criteria. And I just can't reach for a powder like that on a daily basis because you just don't know what you're gonna run into. Um, so that's really my, my thing with all of these is that when there's such good powders out there that don't give me flashback that perform as well or better than these do, I'm gonna reach for those. So I know there are a lot of different options for setting powders out there and I've probably tried others in years past and have wiped them from my brain. I don't really remember. Um, but these are the ones I really, really like right now at this point in time. I'll be trying others, I'm sure, and these may be replaced or rotated in and out, who knows? And I actually do have an older video on how I set my makeup. And if you want to see that, I'll link that. But I was actually thinking about doing a video on combining that with how I set my under eyes because I have separate videos on how I conceal my dark circles and that does include setting. And then I have the separate one for how I set with powder. I could combine that. So let me know if you wanna see that all in one video, if that would be helpful for you. And let me know your favorite setting powders. I would like to know that too, because I'm always looking to try new things. So I hope you found that helpful and thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. And if you are not following me on my social media, I'm pretty active on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter. And I'll put that on the screen and down below. Bye-bye.